Miami Hurricanes fall camp practice number six has finished up and I'm here to give you a quick recap. And no, your ears do not deceive you. This was practice number six. My last video was about practice number four. And that's because practice number five went down on Sunday and no media was allowed to view it. And personally, I have no problem with that because I like the way Mario operates. So let's talk about what went down today. What's going on, Canes fans? You know what? I'm proud of you guys. Last week in some of the videos, I mentioned that we plan on having a lot of fun on this channel this season, and it would mean a lot if those of you that aren't would consider subscribing to the channel. And I'm very happy to report that just last week alone, just last week, we gained a little over 400 subscribers. So welcome to all the new people that have decided to subscribe to the channel, or maybe you've been on the fence about it and you finally decided to pull the trigger. And shout out to those of you that have been promoting the channel and pushing it on social media and other different places. I very, very much appreciate it. So practice number six was still not in full pads and neither was Sunday, but that's gonna happen soon. I wanna start off talking about the receivers. Drops are never a good thing. But it's nice seeing Coach Kevin Beard bring back push-ups for dropped passes. This is something that I'm a big fan of, and I think it's important to do that because it can help sort of train or retrain your brain. And we know that over the years, that's an area that we've struggled with. It, it's not been everyone in that position group, but at times we've had a lot of drops for various different reasons. So, you know, Requiring those push-ups for every dropped ball in practice is a big deal. Beard has been very vocal the last few days in praising Jacoby George and his ability to run routes. He's actually said that he thinks he might be the best route runner in that position group. So time will tell if that translates from practice to the field. But it is nice to hear because, you know, Jacoby George is a guy that we've been saying his time is coming. This is your year. This is the year he's going to pop off. And hopefully we actually see that happen in 2023. Overall, there were less drops today, and the timing seemed to be a little more on point between the quarterbacks and the receivers. And Ray Ray was, of course, doing normal Ray Ray things like he does. There was a big time uh, catch that he caught from Emory Williams at one point during practice, but you know, what we're not talking about enough here, in my opinion, is the guy that's going to be the starting quarterback this year, Tyler Van Dyke. Everybody's talking about Jakari and has his accuracy improved. And wow, Emory Williams, the young guy, continues to shine and surprise everyone. But what's TVD been up to? Practice number six was a good day for Van Dyke. I mean, he's really been consistently consistent throughout fall camp and I think that's why you don't hear too many people talking about him because he's not really been way up high or way down low he's just been consistent like we just said and that's what you would expect to see out of a guy that is the starting quarterback I mean it would be his job to lose and no one really thinks that he's going to lose it to Jakari or Emery uh, and, you know, he's been a little more vocal, I've noticed, at fall camp, which is something that's a, a good thing. But TBD's not really known as the vocal guy, and that's okay. That's, that's TBD. That's who he is. But I'm just hoping that he doesn't become too complacent, I guess, because, again, he's looked at as this is the starting guy. No one is going to jump ahead of him unless he gets injured or just something crazy happens, you know? And... I don't think he will. I, I don't think that Tyler Van Dyke will. I mean, a lot of his struggles last year, again, everyone puts on Josh Gaddis and the offense he was running and injuries and the offensive line. So him just being consistent throughout fall camp is, is not necessarily a bad thing. He's surrounded by some, some pretty serious athletes, right? So we just need to be able to give him time to get the ball in their hands and they can take it from there. But Tyler Van Dyke overall has shown throughout fall camp that he is QB number one. 
There was a focus today on blocking drills for both the wide receivers and the tight ends, and tight end Cam McCormick continues to be very effective in those. And I actually want to address something here right quick. I, I kind of shifted gears randomly, but I'm seeing a lot of people in the comment section on my videos and on social media asking why we're practicing inside so much. You know, they're worried that we need to be out in the heat. You know, that's something that's been a bonus for us. You know, it helps with our stamina. And uh, whenever we, when other teams come to South Florida and play in hard rock, you know, we they kind of get worn down and we don't because we practice in that every day. And the thing is, is the media is only allowed to view around 30 minutes or so of practice at the beginning. And what the team is doing is the first portion of practice takes place in the IPF. And most of that is going to be stretching and some various different um, position drills and things like that. But then the rest of practice does take place outside. So the team is out in the heat. They are practicing out there. Uh, but it's just that the media really doesn't get to view very much of that portion of practice, if any at all. All the players also seem very excited about Canes Fest, which is happening this Saturday. And they're going to have some sort of open practice from around 9.15 to 11.30. And then after that, fans can get autographs from uh, former alumni and current players. So this is going to be a really hyped up, exciting Saturday for Canes fans, the players, and the coaches. But it's sort of interesting because... I remember Mario Cristobal mentioning that the first scrimmage was going to happen this Saturday and everything on social media has this labeled as an open practice that the fans can view. So I don't know if it's going to be a practice or a scrimmage or a little bit of both, or maybe again, considering the way Mario likes to operate, maybe the scrimmage is happening later, you know, when there are no fans and there are no media, because again, a lot of times that's the way he likes to do things, which is okay. I just don't know exactly yet what to expect from Kane's Fest when it comes to scrimmage or practice or what it's going to be. But there's going to be lots of things for fans to do there, and it should be a really good time. And one last note on the offense today. Multiple guys on the defensive side of the ball have mentioned how difficult it is to defend against the run game with the multiple skill sets these running backs bring to the table. I know specifically linebacker KJ Cloyd mentioned how each guy is unique and really excels at something in particular. And this has been keeping the defense on their toes throughout fall camp. You know, you have guys like Parrish, who's going to be an every down kind of back. He's a mixture of speed and power. But then you have Chaney, who really is a complete back, who brings, you know, size to the position. You're going to have guys like Fletcher, who is a threat in the passing game. So again, they it, it's tough. You know, we've heard multiple times that the, the offense has won the day, especially on the ground. And this is good for us because, again, iron sharpens iron. And at the end of the day, it could make the defense better and more effective at stopping the run against opponents later this season. And speaking of linebacker K.J. Cloyd, the transfer from Louisville, this guy looks big. And, you know, it's very interesting and refreshing whenever you take a look at the size we added in the linebacker room in 2023. I mean, just to name some of these guys off, you've got Francisco, six foot three, 230 pounds. Washington, six foot three, 220 pounds. Malik Bryant, six foot two, 225 pounds. Are, are, are you seeing a trend here? Come on now, help me out. I know you're seeing it. KJ Cloyd, six foot two, 229. Pulliam, Six foot three, two hundred and twenty. Aguirre, six foot two, two hundred and fifteen. Size, size, size. Finally, most of these guys are six foot two and up, and you love to see it. It was also pretty funny when the media asked Cloyd what the biggest difference was between Louisville and Miami, and his answer was the heat. He said, "Man, it gets hot." here in South Florida. In Louisville, it's, it's nothing even close to what it is here. And that just kind of put a smile on my face. Cloyd is, you know, a cool guy. He's, he's very well-spoken. And 
you know, he he's really working hard, and I think he could earn a lot of playing time this season. Freshman cornerback Damari Brown actually got some reps with the first team defense today, and he has some really quick feet. Can you imagine here just for a second getting to see both of the Brown brothers on the field at the same time at some point this season? I think that could be really cool. The name we haven't talked about much this fall is Reuben Bain, but that doesn't mean that he's not been doing well and working hard. Gidry said that he fully expects Bain to see a lot of playing time this season. I think right now, just, you know, without the full pads being on, we've not really seen his, his impact, and I think that we will once they go on. Gidry was also very open when talking about his defense and the struggles that some of the young guys have had in picking it up. Now, again, he said that they continue to make progress each and every day in fall camp, but his defense does have a lot of movement. Again, we know that uh, he likes to really confuse the offense and show a lot of different looks, and, and they can change it up pre-snap. And, you know, that's going to be kind of tough for the young guys. They've, you know, th they're already trying to adjust to the college level, plus learn this defense that has a, a ton of movement in it. But in the end, the payoff should be worth it. And that's something that is going to be expected from the young guys. But that's really about it for practice number six. Just a lot of making sure that everyone understands and can execute both the offense and the defense and lots of teaching going on. And again, the media is not getting to see a whole lot of this, so you're not seeing everything that's going on. A lot of things happening behind the scenes, which is A-OK. -okay. Uh, I would like to end this thing with showing the practice jerseys. And I know everyone's already seen clips all on social media. It's just practice jerseys. Trust me, I get it. But I just wanted to show them right quick in case you haven't looked at them closely. Because even though it is just the practice jerseys, and this is Corey Flagg, by the way, I like the simplicity here. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, Adidas got rid of putting their name under the logos. So it's, you know, a little more just uh, plain and simple with just the three stripes, which I actually dig. I think that's a more modern look, and I think it looks a lot cleaner. On the sides, you can kind of see the three stripes, but it has stripes within the stripes, I'm not making a big deal out of practice jerseys. Don't get it twisted and and leave some kind of weird comment about Coop, you know, cares so much and is looking into the practice jerseys. It's not that. It's just, I'm going to be honest. I know Canes fans are all about keeping it simple. Don't mess with what works. You know, I do videos talking about, you know, enjoying the alternate jerseys and all these different things. And even though it doesn't determine the outcome of the game, it plays no part in Canes fans always get up in arms every time I say that I like something a little different. So I wanted to show you kind of just how plain and, and, and normal the practice jerseys are, but how they've actually changed them up just a little bit. And again, it, practice jerseys are very simple, and there's, there's not a lot to them because it's practice jerseys. I'm just saying I like them, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, we're just having a good time. Uh, let's chop it up down in the comment section below. Uh, I will say one thing we haven't really discussed a lot so far in fall camp is special teams. I'm thinking about doing a video talking about who I would like to see returning punts and kickoffs this season. But you really don't see a whole lot of news coming out about special teams. I mean, I'm sure Andy is, is, is kicking like crazy. You got Joyce in there just punting all day. And I, I may kind of possibly reach out to those guys and see if we can get some more information on how some of the special teams work is going and again once everybody gets into full pads uh, some more information will come out and maybe we'll get to talk a little bit more about it but let's chop it up about something down in the comment section below remember though guys we're all one big happy college football family but at the end of the day i gotta say it's always better when you get to rep the u coach coop peace out i'll see y'all in the next one